The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing a camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptisms, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe, even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of our Lord. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Ashe, ashe. Asalaam alaikum. Shalom. 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 Please be seated. The peace of the Lord be with you. In the history of our liturgy, we offer hospitality when we say, Peace be with you. It is not the peace that the world understands, but it is a peace that offers hope and that offers justice and that offers a place at the table for all of God's creation. It is a place that recognizes our sinfulness in our environment and pledges to change that environment. Both our social environment
environment. Today's reading is filled with tropes that are often used to beat and abuse people, but a careful reading of today's scripture might lead us in a different direction, perhaps a bit more hopeful than that unquenchable fire. Remember, fire is symbolic in our scriptures. Remember, there was a pillar of fire that led the people of Israel out of captivity during the day and during the night. Remember that on that glorious day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends upon the servants of Christ with fire. And the wind, the wind is brought into Scripture as the voice of Sophia, of wisdom, of empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So if we understand those images, let's perhaps reread just a little bit today's gospel. I got so excited about the readings and forgot to do something. I love today's readings. So I'm talking about the wind and the Holy Spirit, and yes, I will tie today's gospel into the work that we do. Uh, just a quick note, I'm getting ahead of myself in my preaching, but you will hear very clearly what John calls us to do, to repent and then to do work. It is not enough to claim tradition and heritage. James, one of my favorite folks, says work, faith without works is hollow. And this is repeated again from the prophet John the Baptist, who is framed by Matthew as who? The coming of Elijah. The prophet, the one that will make the way for the Holy One of God, the Messiah, to come and to preach and teach and to forever change this world. And we are changing today. How many of you all believe that St. Anna's is your church? Just raise your hand. I'm going to say that's about 60 or 70 of you. So, clerk of the vestry, we have a quorum. <laughs> I ask you who believes your church because I want you to understand that all were invited to be cleansed and washed. It was not just for Jews, it was for Gentiles. And just as a footnote, baptism was a rite of passage for Gentiles who became Jews. But you didn't hear John say, this is only for Gentiles. It is wide open for everyone. So our reading today says righteousness and forgiveness and transformation, metanoia, is available to all. The word in here for repent is actually metanoia. It's one of my favorite words in the Greek language. Now, literally, it means to change your mind. But we know the Greeks. They never let it go at literally. Because it carries with it, like our own language, an abundance that isn't simply by the context. It means not only, but in effect becomes something quite new. Something that you were not before. It is a very rich and powerful statement, metanoia. We who are in recovery understand metanoia. We become something new, casting off something old. And we lean in each other in order to do that in something we call recovery. And I believe that all Christians are in a form of recovery or should be. I believe that all Christians need to come before their God and say, God, I'm broken. 
God, I have fallen short of everything that you've taught me. And know that when you say that, your offenses are blotted out. That our God loves you. Eternally, dearly, and deeply with a love that perhaps you and I cannot understand. And John the baptizer opens the way for this to occur in sacred tradition, in sacred history, in the coming of the Messiah, in our Savior and friend, in the prophet Jesus. So, as the people of St. Anna's Episcopal Church, have we done that work? Have we come to the Jordan? Have we soaked our souls in the cold waters of forgiveness and repentance and stepped out on the other side and begun the work of building the kingdom of God? Amen, yes. Amen. Tell yourselves, amen, yes. If you're here for one day and you haven't been here for 10 years, amen, yes, because you're a part of it. If you are here for 10 years and you bring the heritage to the church, great, but you got to do the work and you're doing it. Two blocks down the street is a metaphor for you. It is the unthinkable. It is the impossible. It is something that small churches like ours just don't do. We sink $3 million in a $1 million property. <laughs> Why? Because this community deserves it, and so do you. Because this community is born as a community that is under assault. Let's be mindful that when Matthew is writing Matthew's text, or rather that it is written, it is written in a time of turmoil, a time of high stress, a time when Jews and Christians were separating in Jamnia, a time when all manner of people were under assault by powerful voices beyond their control. Emperors that would burn Christians as tokens. That was Nero. He did that. And so this was written at a time not, I submit to you, un Today is accumulation in a sum, I believe, of the past four years. I look out and I see familiar faces. I look out and I see faces that I am not familiar with, and I love it. Because it means the Word of God is going into the world through you. That people want context for their spirit, their devout Holy Spirit that needs a home, a place to thrive and to grow and to be encouraged, a place that won't knock you down, but a place that says, your spirituality, your holiness has deep worth to us and to our God. And so we do silly things like invest in a community resource center in order to help preserve not only tradition, but the very culture that has made this city a great city. And to open those doors up to culture bears and say, come in. We want you to stay with us. We rejoice in you. We want a drag show at Dodwell House. And I know just the producer that can get that done. She's with us today. We want a place where children who are questioning their identity and trying to claim who they are in a world that defines you by your sex, which is silly. We want a safe space for them to gather and to discuss and to discover and to encourage them and to give them a place that says, you know, you can be who you are. And we want you to be who you are. We don't want to fix you because God already made you. 
and you don't need fixing. We want to invite children who are deprived of education into a forum led by skilled teachers and people with a vision and insight, people who come from this very neighborhood. Powerful child, I want to unleash you on the world. And I want to give you the tools to unleash you. Doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that sound powerful? I'm competing with Curry here. That's you. That's part of my report. That is Dodwell House. But not only Dodwell House. <laughs> That's her broken tile in the parish hall. That's the warped wood on the walls and you say, man, this place doesn't have insulation. I notice it, and I know you do too. Wow, we got a parachute for a ceiling in a room. And it's starting to fall down. But it looks nice. Did you see the giraffe on the wall? I know y'all are looking. This is our home. My report to you is this, that since the pandemic, since the plague, has seen fit to perhaps step back a bit, not go away, but step back, and you've seen fit to gather in community. Our church has been growing since then. And it's growing, I think, in a healthy way. Because I'm seeing all kinds of cool people come through that door. And you're looking for a little good news. And you're looking for a place that says, like John, we might be Episcopalians, but you need to do the work. It's not sufficient for you to have beautiful liturgy without beautiful liturgy in the world. And the liturgy in the world is the work in the world. The liturgy in the world is putting cans in grocery bags. The liturgy of the world is seeing a small child and saying, how about some red beans and rice, let's talk. The liturgy of the world is a procession that doesn't just prance around its church, but goes into the heart of the Treme and the French Quarter, proudly praying and singing and praising with palm leaves and all manner of folk who say, this is who we are, join us and praise the Lord and praise each other for his creation. Praise God for their creation. For God is there. God is often referred to as Father by our Lord Jesus because that was the identity that Jesus knew. But I assure you, if you try to sexualize God, you're kind of missing the point. You really are. I mean, sex is important. But it's not who we are. It's only a very small part. You cry, you weep, you work, you love, you have ambition, you have hope, you have vision. And that's when you're doing God's work. And I want to tell you, my report as your rector, my last report as your rector, you're doing the work of God. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. Okay, some of y'all know about that, some of y'all don't. We're Episcopalians, we're on a learning curve here. Okay? Simply peace be with you. And God's gift of peace be with you. And let us continue to build the Dodwell House and finish that work. Therefore, for the work that will be done inside its walls, while it will be beautiful on the outside, its beauty will radiate from its inside. Amen. Its beauty will radiate from people like Dr. Davis, people like Buck Close, people like Diana Myers, people like you and you. You see, we will gather in holiness 
and the holiness will be found in our work. Amen? Amen. You're a good church, St. Anna's. You know who you are, own it, claim it, and live it. Amen.